Yes, yes, this is Mr. Controversy, and this is the infamous Three Point Conversion Station. Keep it locked. Yes, yes, we are back on another Saturday morning inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. And I'm your host, Mr. Controversy. Did you miss me? I am fronting, as they say, in the hood, because I'm down. I'm sick because I don't know what right now. <sighs> but anyway, I'm going to make it through. <laughs> and uh, of course I'm not here by myself Of course you know we got the team here The crew, minus one Miss Crystal Dayan is in the building Hello Crystal Good morning How are you doing? I'm doing swell Good, good, good I got my man G What up G? Yo <laughs> And I got my man Man, who is here once again filling in for my man D Intellectual. Because Duty had called once again. But Duty calls for my man, the superstar, H.O. What's, What's going on, H.O.? What's happening, man? And, um. Need your energy today, bro. Got you. I got your back. I got your back. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. And I. I I'm appalled almost at this, at the quick hit sometimes of. And we're going to get into it. But some things don't take all day. That's all I'm going to say. And 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 it's it's crazy that this is coming up now. But I'm like, Ugh, whatever the case, <laughs> this is this is absolutely this almost go. This almost made it to the stop it. Mm. That's mm. all I would say. So. We got to stop it coming up. It almost did. It, yeah. I started to. I, you see what I'm we'll, saying? We'll get to I it. I mean, my goodness. We, we still could give it one, though. Oof, we still could give like, it one. What, what anyway, we have a great show for you today. We have special guest, Mr. Joe Cordes, coming in, talking NBA with us. He will be on the line. Also, we have Dr. Fowler. Donnie Fowler, the orthopedic from Ortho Atlanta, he will be here to give his intake on the injuries on the segment Ask a Doc. Also, we're talking about a topic that needs to be talked about. Something about the NFL going down a, a very slippery slope, you know, with the firing of these black coaches and then some of the hirings and especially what's been going on in the past in the NFL. We're going to get into that. Also, we're going to talk about the NFL playoffs. Um, hard to talk about, but uh, so. <laughs> and then <laughs> we got the NFL picks, of course, and uh, we got so much to go on. Talk about quick hits. What's on my mind? Stop it! So make sure you check us out on eleven hundred AM WWE locally in Atlanta on the radio. Also, you can check us out on iHeartRadio, tune in now. I mean, tune in, then radio now, and that's 1100-WWWE, the real. Also call in at 404-603-8770. Like I said, especially on this hot topic, but any topic, man, we, we want you to chime in. Don't be afraid. You all have a lot to say on in the chat room, on Facebook, the Three Point Conversion Facebook page, which will be live. So you can call in as well. But all right, it is time for these quick hits. Let's get it. Shout out to Sharon Beats for the six beats. Let's get it. So, this is not what H.O. was talking about, but finally, finally, the Philadelphia 76ers will retire Moses Malone jersey and also give him a statue. Now, Moses played in the in the NBA. How many years was it? Like 20, 21? Something like that. Um. He played for like 28 teams. But um, and he's been successful <laughs> wherever he's been. <laughs> but um, finally, from, from seventy four to ninety five, yeah, 
And finally, with Philadelphia, which he won a championship for, you know, he was that key piece. So this is well deserved. Finals MVP. Finals MVP. Well deserved. 4 4 4. Three time MVP. Well deserved. 12 time All Star. Well deserved. Did I mention NBA too? Man, he played. <laughs> he played for the uh, ABA, NBA, <laughs> the Big Three. He didn't play. For it all. <laughs> but, hey, shout out to my man Moses. He was the first person I remember watching the NBA. Like as a little kid, like I'd be scared to play against him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, shout out to him. Shout out to him because he's a former Hawk. So yeah, man, he played for every team in the NBA. Almost Buffalo Braves. Every team in the NBA played for the Bucks. He played for the Spurs. Uh, who he else did. he played for? Houston Rockets. Played for Houston. Yep. Played for the Washington Tor- Bullets. Yep. Bullet. Toronto Raptors. No. <laughs> Spirit of St. Louis. <laughs> he played for everybody. But anyway, congrats to uh, Moses Malone. Moving on. Please get your button ready. Oh, G. Jesus Christ. So, former Atlanta Falcons. OC offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian, AA alum, AA alum, has been hired as the Arizona Cardinals offensive coordinator. Stop it! One more time. Stop it! But I will say, I want to ask you this, Ho. Is it really his fault that he can't? Really, his fault, or should we blame Atlanta for putting putting him in that position and having him to say, "Hey, you coach this way. We want you to use this system." I'm an accountability type guy. I start from the top. I start with the root. I can't be mad at him, right? Period. You put me in this situation, so I'm gonna do the best I can. Now, personally. I have nothing against him. My question is, G, is if Kingsbury is such this offensive guru and we see the we see this trend when the head coach is the play caller as well, why are you hiring the offensive coordinator? You still need someone to bounce ideas off of, to collaborate with. I mean, even though you make the final decision, if you're going to call the plays, you're the one making the final decision, but still you need others to have some ideas. Okay. Cause I- okay. Hold on. Eric B enemy, right? Offensive coordinator for Kansas city. Yes. Is Andy Reed really bouncing ideas off Eric B enemy? The stuff, Eric, where did Eric B enemy play college football? Colorado. What did they run when he was at Colorado? The wishbone or the option. And what principles does Andy Reid incorporate into his offense? No look passes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Andy Reid. No, uh, yeah. That, that's, I mean, that's, I, that's I, I, understand, I understand that, and and, and I get it. Um, I don't know. This, this is this but no. Is, it, it makes sense because I wonder. But think about it though. You you mentioned Andy Reid. We've seen Peterson. He got a job. Look what he's doing. Nagy. Ooh, I'm about to cuss him out. If you got <laughs> Nagy, look Mac, what he's doing. Mac, Mac, but but, but, these my, are no, but my, my, my point is, they came from Kansas City. And I always thought that like people like Andy Reid, um, who else is a guru? Who was guru? An offensive guru. Do we have any more coaches that are older coaches that are offensive gurus? Gruden was supposed to be Gruden. one. But I'm saying that had, but I'm saying that had like, you had an OC, but knowing this guy's calling a play. It's like a defensive oh, coordinator. Uh, it's McCar- like, McCarthy. McCarthy. It's like Jason Garrett. It's like a defensive coordinator. You know. <laughs> he, was supposed to, he, was, he was supposed to be <laughs> right. the, the play caller. Right. But I'm, I'm saying, just saying that's who they were. The coach, who's the defensive guru, right. that hired a defensive coordinator. I think you have to have him. But it seems like it always pans out. So let's see. Because the difference is. Quinn wasn't an offensive coordinator. Well, he don't know well, offense. Right. He don't even know, obviously. But but the, but the thing is, and, and, and I'm sure we're going to get to this, but what, what lies the problem is if you know that Andy Reid is calling the plays or these head coaches are calling the plays, 
some of the credit goes to what who is named the offensive coordinator, and then when they actually get jobs, they flame out. Right. You see what I'm saying? No, I agree. They they just flame out because they getting credit like uh Josh McDaniels. He I mean he, yeah, he we, just no, he flamed I, I, out. I, hey, look, we got to move on. Right. I understand you. It's it's a great question. Moving on, speaking of coordinators, the Chicago Bears <laughs> was with the pause. Man. Have um, it's not that dramatic. <laughs> we 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 hired the Bears have hired new defensive coordinator Chuck Pagano. Which I'm not gonna lie, at first I had it when I heard. It, I'm like, I don't, uh, huh? But I forgot he was in Baltimore. He served as defensive backs coach. I think from like 2000 and. 9 to 2010 or 2008 to 2010 and then 2011 he was the defensive coordinator for the Ravens so I like that defense over there you know it's 3-4 defense so I hate it that we lost Nick Fangio that's why you supposed to I mean Vic Fangio that's why you supposed to win when you can have a chance but anyway moving on man <laughs> it's a good hire um, yeah I, I think I like it listen to this so Charles Henderson High School in Alabama um her, their forward, Mayori or Mayori Davenport. Now she was stripped from el- eligibility playing basketball, and she was playing for the I think she for the USA basketball team, and they sent her a check, mm-hmm. and they all get like a little stipend, but her check was they sent her by accident too much, sent her another check. I think she, I don't know if she spent it, but she cashed it, or she was about to. She never spent it. She sent it back, but the Alabama schools they said no. Uh uh-uh. uh. They looked into it. You suspended. We're stripping you from playing. She couldn't play. Well, her parents went and um, asked for a motion, you know, and the judge granted her an emergency motion. Right. She played her first game last night, and she scored 25 points. Congrats. Justice is served. Right. Right. So, I'm, I'm, we are happy for her, and definitely will be rooting for her from here on out. So, yeah. um, shout out to her. She'll be playing judge. at uh... – Rutgers, thanks. Rutgers, yeah, she'd yeah. be playing at Rutgers. I tell you what, that check would have came to Bankhead. It never would have made it back, though. What? That's for sure. That check? Oh. That check would have came to Bankhead. It never would have made it back. <laughs> check would have came here. It never made it back. Uh, moving on. Paul George just passed Kevin Durant in the NBA All Star voting for the Fords in the Western Conference. Do you think this is valid? What is your take on this? Because Kevin is averaging 28 points, 6 assists. This is a popularity contest. And obviously... Right now, he's hot. Obviously, Durant being on social media, in his feelings <laughs> most of the time, <laughs> probably does not fare well with the popularity with, of the NBA fan. So, hey, it, it is what it is. I mean... This doesn't obviously signify who's the better player, who has the most skills, or whatever the case may be. But I'm asking your opinion real quick. Do you? I mean, right now, I mean, we know George is playing out his mind. He's playing out his mind. But it, KD is balling also. Who, I, who do you think it's? And we know it's a popularity contest. But I'm saying your vote right right now. Would you go George or would you go Durant starting in it? Western Durant. Durant. G, who would you who do you have? I take I take Durant right now. See, I take George. I think George is playing great right now. I I, I take George, but we'll see. And last but not least, pitcher Jake DeGrom and outfielder Mookie Betts avoided arbitration. And DeGrom signed a one-year $17 million deal with the Mets. And Mookie signed a one-year $20 million deal with the Boston Red Sox. So arbitration is no joke, huh? Yeah, and also to add, the Braves signed all the arbitration for the Yeah, they did that. And the Braves signed all of them right. Both the Navy. And all seven. Culberson. Let me ask you a question. Is that, do you look at that as more as like... Um, and football, you know how they um, tag you? Franchise. The franchise tag, is that like, is it kind of? Somewhat. It's based on your numbers previous. Uh, your previous, uh, the last two years, I think of the last couple of years, they look at the numbers and they kind of weigh it and have a value. It, it's, it's crazy how the the sport itself 
how they value your how they value how much they're going to are willing to pay you. Right. It's it's quite interesting. Right. You know, but uh in football it's it's more position that they kind of do it. In baseball it's, it it just yeah, it, it is, is what, what it is. is right. You know, so All right. So please don't move or change that dial. We will be back with a very interesting conversation. A mm. very interesting topic you don't want to miss. Um we will be right back. Good morning, this is Greg Hurd, and this is your three-point conversion sports news break. The Atlanta Hawks got back on the winning track last night by upsetting the Philadelphia 76ers on the road, 123-121. John Collins, who scored 29 points and grabbed nine rebounds, hit the game-winning jumper with 25 seconds left. Kevin Herter also pitched in with a career-high 29 points. Georgia Tech men's basketball team will travel to Syracuse to face the Orange. The Yellow Jackets are 9-6 and six and 1-1 one and one in ACC conference play. The 12 and 4 Georgia State Panthers will host Louisiana Monroe today at the Georgia Sports University, just excuse me, the Georgia State University Sports Arena at 1 o'clock. Make sure to get your updates exclusively with the three point conversion. The divisional playoff games are today as the Indianapolis Colts travel to Kansas City to face the Chiefs, and the Dallas Cowboys are in Los Angeles to play against the Rams. Make sure to follow the three point conversion for exclusive Super Bowl coverage and all of your major sports news updates. It's where fans' opinions matter. There's a lot going on in the world, and your world is always changing. That's why it's important to stay connected. The latest news, the latest entertainment, the newest music. If it's in the air or on the air, it can be in the palm of your hand, wherever you are, with the iHeartRadio app. iHeartRadio. Over 1,500 live radio stations from across the country and over 15 million songs to create your own custom stations. Mm -hmm. Text IHR to 45495 to download the app or listen at iHeartRadio.com. Standard text and data rates apply. What's up? This is Chris Tucker for the three point conversion. Let's go. Yes, yes, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. It's Mr. Controversy here with my man, H.O. Yeah. And this next topic, the hot topic, is brought to you by Cindy Cuts Barbershop, located on 3000 Chapel Hill Road, Suite 206, Douglasville, Georgia. Make sure you guys check them out. If you need a fresh cut, got a date. You have a premiere to go to, an event, wherever. Family union, they, they're going to get you right. Everyone can cut in there. No empty chairs. And um, great talk, great barbershop vibe, talking sports community, unity, and everything. Make sure you check out my main man, Dwayne Chambers. He will be, once you walk in, all the way on the left, the last barber on the left, all the way down. And you can follow him on Instagram at Simha the Barber. That's S I M H A T H E B A R B E R. Shout out to the whole barbershop. What up, Z? All right. So, this next segment, the hot topic, is definitely hot. I'm wondering, ladies and gentlemen, if the NFL, NFL is going down a slippery, slippery slope. They just came off of this situation last two years with the kneeling and everything. First, they banned Kaepernick, basically. Then um, they want to come up with rules and say, okay, well, you can do this, but you can't. You had owners talking about you, you better not do this or you're getting all of this crap just because they want to stand up and protest. Not against the NFL, but just protest, period. Um, and then they hired... 
my man um, Reed. And when they bring in Eric Reed, the safety, he was one of the people who were who was um, kneeling down with Kaepernick and continued to kneel after Kaepernick was gone. And then for a moment, it seemed like he got blackballed. And then he was picked up by the Carolina Panthers midway through the season. Next thing you know, he's got uh, tested, what, seven times, six, seven times? Yep. Uh, um, you know, for um, – Substance abuse, substance, uh, ab- seven, seven times in 11 weeks. Substance abuse, or just try substance, just make sure he's right clean, which is the far, it was far more than anyone else, but he's only played like almost half, basically half the season. So you look at that, even though it was a great season for the NFL, you say, okay, you know, I guess you could say either the NFL, people were distracted by the great season or the, it was just a great season, so you're not thinking about it. Then you have this. This off season, we see a barrage of black coaches get fired. Right, all these coaches get fired, and not one get hired. Or one? Hmm. Was it one? No. Who? No. No. Not no coach. Not there's no not a head coach. coach. No. Oh. Not I mean, a, head so, coach. a couple of them got coordinator jobs. Oh, yeah, okay. We're talking there's, about oh, head okay, coach. Okay. 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 I got you. So. Just with this alone, we just brought up. Does this make the NFL look iffy, or 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 is it justified with the firings? NFL always look iffy. Um, this is the owners' league, and they go let you know. Um, you know, if if, if you if <laughs> I'm, I guess I shouldn't say that, but. <laughs> The NFL always says we are the we bigger than you. You're never going to be bigger than than us, the players. That is, and when you look at this situation, they even created a a Rooney Rule to appease some of the naysayers about how this looks. And I don't I don't even think it has helped, or it may have even gotten worse. Right. So, to, just to what they call it, the token interview is 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 sad to me. Um, I can name a, a bunch of these guys that have gotten interviews, but I mean, we can we can go down the list. Like, how many got interviewed? I mean, and they, I, I know everybody, in, but enemy got an interview. Yeah, uh, they didn't wait. Well, Chris Richards was supposed to be interviewing for the Miami job, but that never happened. I think like more teams are are trying to get their coach now, and you're supposed to if they're if your coach is the coach you want to interview is his team is in the playoffs right now. You have to wait until after, right, to hire them, right. But some are trying to get somebody right now. And Which that is a, that is that's, affecting that's, some of the black yeah. coaches that who may have been rumored to be uh, mm. hired for these jobs. And again, you know, I, it seemed like they took it literally for Black Monday. You know, it, it just <laughs> Steve Wills got the worst day ever. Okay, let's go down to this, and that's what I want to say. Okay, so you look at Marvin Lewis. I mean, I think everyone was saying, how in the world is he keeping his job? 16 years. I was saying that. I said it. No. But the owner liked him. Yeah. So he should have been fired eight years ago. I mean, I don't want anybody to get fired. But, you know, he should have been gone eight years ago. But he stayed. But they got rid of him. We all agree that's – yeah, I agree with that. Early in the season – we saw um, Hugh, Jackson. Hugh Jackson get fired. And, you know, and just to mention, Hugh got fired again. He, probably the first coach ever to get fired twice in one season. <laughs> you got to be a stupid mother get fired on your – but anyway, but I'm like, that's crazy. But uh-huh. he got fired. That's justified. I agree with that. Now, and um, – New York, Todd Bowles got fired. 
four years? Four, four years. years. Yeah, four years. Quickly got a job as a DC. But I, my, my thing with Todd Bowles is, like, when did he have a chance? You started over with a uh, rookie quarterback. Last year you gave him an old vet quarterback to basically say, this is our chance where we're going to try to get a quarterback. And then the year before, you forced Ryan Fitzpatrick on him. Then you have McCown at one one time. Last yeah, yeah, McCown in twenty seventeen. Yeah, oh, yeah, but yeah. Fitzpatrick the year before that. Yeah, like I don't know. I understand you want to go offense, but I don't know. And then Steve Wilkes. That never I had don't a chance. Get. They tried to say. I mean, the report has been that the team wasn't competitive enough under With him. Who? But if you just drafted a quarterback. And then you pay twenty million for a quarterback who has no knees. Your your star running back is coming <laughs> off an injury. Your defense isn't what it was. You have Patrick Peterson and some right. other dudes, uh, and Chandler Jones, I guess. But that's not enough. I mean, I don't know what their expectation was, but they're claiming that they weren't competitive enough. And just for one year, just one year. Well, what were they before they fired Will? They weren't competitive then. Right. Obviously, because they fired their coach. That's the whole. It, it, <laughs> we can make excuses for whatever we want to make our point or to make what it is we want to happen to happen. And this is what's been going on for a whole bunch of years in the NFL, as far as I'm concerned. You have to wonder someone of a caliber of Tony Dungy. Why hasn't he gotten back into coaching? Does he know something that we don't know? Or is he closer closer to a situation where he understands and, and hears the whispers about what's going on and how unfair this could be? Because a person of his caliber, which you can look at someone that's close, you know, to you, Lovey Smith, mm-hmm. the person of their caliber. How big was it when both coaches made it to the Super Bowl with that character? Right. And neither one of them are in the league now. Right. That's something to think about. Right. And Lovey, that is something to think about. When Lovey got fired, now when Lovey got fired in Chicago, right? It made sense. The only reason why I say it made sense is because you brought in a new GM. A new GM is going to want a new coach. Right. I get that. But he goes to Tampa Bay. Steve Wilkes. And everyone, All over again. And everyone. Well, that that was a situation to where, and, and we've talked about this before, right. to where, oh, okay, you have this new quarterback, you, but, and you have this great offensive coordinator, apparently. The quarterback has a good season. Okay, let's make him the head coach now. And there was really no logic behind firing Lovey in Tampa. Again. To bring in Dirk Cutter. We can make adjustments to our comments however we need to, to make what we want to do be what it is that we want to do. So It ran Lovey out the lead. Right. Ran out the career. lead. So, look, this man went to a Super Bowl. But Okay, so look. All right. This is crazy. So, now let's talk about the coaches. I want to talk about two coaches that got hired. Cliff Kingsbury gets hired in Arizona. I'm going to let you do the honors. This man got fired in college. Stop it. But you get hired as a coach? Not only fired in college, fired at a, at best, middling Big 12 school. And you want me to add to that? And was hired at USC and then walked away from that to go to the NFL. And, I, I don't and, get- and this is this is the thing. This is this, this is how you know something is going on. If he knew the NFL would be calling him, why would you sign with USC? Why would you take that job? He had a he had a backup. That was the backup plan. <laughs> so let me that, talk- that's the only thing it could be. Is that was the backup plan? Okay, I'm going to take this USC job if I if. Because these coaches can move – if they can go wherever they want or whatever, 
they'll already have they already have a job and they just get hired somewhere else and they haven't done anything in either place yet. So here, here's another. I'm gonna bring up another one. Then you look at Adam Gase. He gets fired this year as as the Dolphins coach and gets hired the next week for the New York Jets. Same division. Same division. You you didn't win anything in New York. I mean in Miami. And you were there a couple of years, three years, I think. And then you go to New York. I mean, then you get fired, and all of a sudden you have a job. But everybody else get hired as a coordinator. Well, some some guys have been living off of who they had success with. Right. Adam Gase had success with Peyton Manning in Denver, so he's living off of that. Cliff Kingsbury is somehow still living off the success with Manziel, and because he coached Patrick Mahomes right. before anybody knew who he was. So, so let me ask this then, quickly. So, with the um, with the these coaches getting hired, all of them tend to be or are basically, except for Vic Fangio, offensive coordinators. Do you think? Can we say like? And I understand you make all excuses, but can we say that is this? Does this have anything to do with the fact that? The league is moving offensively, or because think about it, all 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 the brothers that got fired were defensive coaches. And if so, where are the black offensive coaches as far as offensive coordinators? Are they in college? Except for Eric Bieniemy, he got. There's not a there's not a whole lot of them in general. Like Hugh Jackson is one, but he, he got fired he, twice he, in a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't. I'm not sure where Pep Hamilton is. When you're the right head now. coach of the Oakland Raiders and the Browns, yeah, it's gonna be the hard. Oakland part was unfit. That was that that was, he was wrong. He, did he got well. wrong. Yeah, then. he did. But just for them being affiliated with you. But I'm just saying, something's got to give, bro. Uh, shout out to Smitty. We can't say that on air, but uh, I'm 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 right there with you. But this is the thing. Every time you start to build a momentum, think about this. Every time you start to build the momentum of it was the hot thing to be the defense. It was a defensive league. And then all of a sudden you got all these uh, black defensive coordinators that were all of a sudden getting opportunities. I think at one point it was up to eight. Mm-hmm. Hit black head coaches or five or something like that. All of a sudden, it was this this defense: Wilkes, uh, um, uh, Vance Joseph. You know, they it was the hot thing. All of a sudden, the Kaepernick situation happened. The flags that you didn't hear nothing about the flag this year. Period. And then all of a sudden, this new phenomenon of young offensive coaches starts to come ab- come about and now everybody wants to move or the NFL wants to move to this offensive thing and now it eliminates opportunities. Right. They're for- chasing the ghost of Sean McVay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's all, and- like Cliff Kingsbury, yeah. he knows Sean McVay. That's probably a big part of why he got right. that job. It's just... You uh, said Pep is at the University of Michigan. Yeah, Pep it's, 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 it's crazy. Ran him out the league. We're going to, um, they did. We're going to take a quick break, something to think about, something to wonder. I don't know, something's got to change. But we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. Three point conversion, Kevin Herter with the Atlanta Hawks. Have you been looking for a radio station that gives you sports? I don't believe it. Oh. It's a touchdown. Entertainment. Are you not entertained? 
and other special interest talk shows. Well, isn't that special? All on one app. Yo, that's dope. What app is that? It's the real 1100 AM app for WWE. Grab it for free in your Google Play or Apple App Store today. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Kent Bazemore from the Atlanta Hawks. You're now listening to Three Point Conversion. Yes, yes, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Great segment for now. It was hard for me to watch the Alabama game, but I was able to. I have to have a job, so I have to watch it. And um, I had a little smirk on my face until, and I was feeling good. I'm like, yes, Alabama's getting beat. I was just because there's so many Alabamas. I was hating. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie until. You see the two kickers kick and hit the goalpost. Almost lost to HO. I got <laughs> mad instantly. Got mad instantly. Um, but <laughs> anyway, the game is over. Everybody's talked about it, of course. But can we say that now, because of the results of that game, but not only even not even the results, but the fact that Clemson and Alabama has played four years in a row. Three years in the championship and then one in the playoff. Last year was the playoff when they met in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Can we say now, let's stop talking about expanding the playoffs? Because what what is the purpose if it's going to be Alabama-Clemson? Now, if we bring other teams, they were worse or so to say, record-wise, than the teams that made it. Right. Could they make a difference? My my whole point would be, you know, for the fanfare, you would probably want to go 18, 16, or whatever the case may be. But if, it, if it's going to always come down to Alabama-Clemson for the last four years, at least three years in the championship game, then to me it's like, Two might be the way to go. Mm. We might just bring it on back to the let's see what two teams can get in because this year's game as far as the Notre Dame and, and, and Clemson and the Alabama the Alabama and Oklahoma game was probably watched more than the Clemson Notre Dame game. But the Clemson Notre Dame game was I mean, that was a, a sleep number. Right. I mean, I, I had my sleep number on ninety two. I mean I <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so can we stop talking about it there? Because I'm not gonna lie, I was one to say maybe we should, but it keeps coming down to two. It seems no, like look, here's the thing. I think what people are tired of seeing, they're tired of seeing the same teams, right? Somebody like always says that and this is something that my mom says. Like it's somebody else's turn to win. They have to actually do it exactly. So you actually have to beat these teams right. to have a chance. Right. Nobody's going to let you win just because, well, you know, we've won five in a we row. Tired of we winning. don't want six. Right. You know, so you have to go. The the other teams have to get better. I think Clay Thompson said something about that, too, where people are we're tired of seeing the Warriors in the finals. Well, you got to go beat them then. So point. the other teams have to get better if they want to win. That's It's that simple. And to me, Clemson, Alabama has played in three championship games over the last four years. It's not even close. The competition's not even close. Mm -mm. It's not even close at at all. I mean, it it, it is. It's ultimately ridiculous of how good these two teams have been. And we talked about it before we came on air. Nick Saban has lost now twenty three assistants. Twenty three. Twenty three. The OC that was supposed to be the new OC, he even leaves now. So, 
to lose 23 offensive coordinators during your tenure and you are still at this level? That means they cheating. No, I'm just kidding. No, I man, he's good. I'm just kidding. No, he's you know, great. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> bro, and then, I mean. And that's interesting because it's like, People are trying to get the – they do this in the NFL. We're trying to get, like, that Patriots assistant, trying to get that Patriot magic to rub off on them. Right. They're trying to get the Alabama magic to rub off on them. And it has it has it worked anywhere yet? Nope. It's just like if you're an assistant of Saban and Belichick, yeah, you can get a job, but are you going to win? I mean, Georgia is the closest thing. At least that, they yeah, went to – Yeah, Kirby, Kirby's the closest. He, he At least he went to the uh, championship game. Yeah. But that's it. Now, speaking of that game – you have two players who are transferring, <laughs> which are quarterbacks from East Team, Jalen Hurts, Kelly Bryant, not to mention now the new one, Tate Martell, who stuck his foot in his mouth, and Justin Fields. Gee, it's, it's a few more, right? Brandon Wimbush. Brandon Wimbush. Tyree Jackson. Um... So, but the fact that, and we spoke about this before, early in the year, early in 2018, about transferring players, are they quitting or not? It's starting to become the norm now. Do we want this to be the norm? Because, okay, before you answer that, do you, I understand I understand Jalen Hurts because mm-hmm. Jalen's a senior, about to be a senior, right? Or his last year. He graduated in December. Yeah, so it's about to be his he graduated. last year. Right. But he has one, one year right. of eligibility. But mm-hmm. then Kelly Bryant, he said he wants to leave. But do you f- understand them or is it still? This is a This is a way to appease – this is a way to appease college students because you allow coaches to move and shape whenever they want to. Mm-hmm. I can recruit you and then leave. Look at Manny Diaz. Oh, that! Oh my God, he moved walk better than Michael Jackson. Um, uh, my man, uh, uh Kingsbury. I mean, yeah, I mean, man, yeah. It, it, there's there's a, a there's a lot of I can recruit you, then I can leave with no penalty. But if you try to leave, you got to sit out of here. So they've made all these adjustments to okay. Well, I tell you what: if you at least graduate, which basically means if you pay your two hundred thousand dollars, if you would have paid your two hundred thousand dollars to get your education. At least we will be satisfied because you would have given the NCAA all of their college tuition money, whether you get it from um, financial aid or the school. Somebody's paying for it. So as long as you graduate, then what we'll do, we'll let you go play anywhere else without any penalty. Now they got this thing where you can appeal if you feel threatened. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's what it is, and that's why I spoke against it before. Because you either feel threatened, or because that's what it's turning to now. I'm threatened. Oh. That, Tate Martell, all this, he would talk. Well, when they what they they asked him about um, Jalen, not Jalen, but Justin Fields coming in. Would you help him out? I think that we were talking about before the game, and he was like, "Well, look, I basically look. I've been here. I know the coach. This is my team, basically. Like." Man, I've been here two years. I don't he care. ain't even spent a minute on campus or now, with the football team. All of a sudden, he gets here. Transfer. Now I'm transferring. You threatened. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I get it with Jalen Hurts. I, I, I definitely understand that. Speaking of Jalen Hurts, the um, we saw with Jalen that it's been that he was seen with Lockie. Uh, the offensive coordinator, Loxley. Loxley, I'm sorry, with the offensive coordinator for Alabama, and um, he's at a know, Maryland who, game. Who's now at Maryland? Who's coaching Maryland? He was at a Maryland game. Mm-hmm. You think he's going to Miami though? Yeah, I think he's going with Enos. 
you know yes. who was the quarterback, quarterback coach, coach for right. Alabama, Alabama. Yep. which is who has who was credited for the improvement of Jalen's passing game uh, for this year. So I think he's going to Miami. Well, we we will see. Like I said, this is going to, going to be very interesting. Um, Funny you should say this. Now I, I just I'm looking at Austin Kendall, quarterback for Oklahoma. He enters the transfer portal mm. as well. So now this brand new since yesterday. See, that's what I'm saying, man. Why is it just quarterback? But I know because <laughs> only one can play at a time. Yeah, <laughs> quarterbacks. I could. Yeah, because if you're not starting at linebacker, you. I think that's eight quarterbacks. But in the I spoke against quarter. this. I said this the year before last, and people got on me. I said, "This is to me, it's a way of you saying it's like giving a um, trophy for second place because you're unhappy or you can't win the job." I quit. I would. I think the 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 especially if you're a quarterback, you have to be better with your decision making as far as. Where you gonna go to school? Okay, who they got at quarterback now? Is he going into the draft? Right. And what what year is he right now? Right. You you have to make a decision. And then maybe I I felt like Justin Fields might have been overconfident, thinking, "Oh, I can beat Trump for this who, job." Who, who told him that? His uncle. Uh, by, and uncle. <laughs> <laughs> at the cookout, Uncle Charles. Yeah. Why he was on the grill? Why he was on the grill? <laughs> why he was on the grill? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Drinking the Heineken. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back. Talk some NFL football. (laughs) Hey, this is Gary Payton. Y'all listen to Three Point Conversion Radio. It's the bomb. Radio. Tune in. Now, you can tune in to this radio station on any smartphone or tablet. iPhone. Android. Blackberry. Nokia. Samsung. Windows phones. Or whatever you have. Download the free TuneIn app from your phone or tablet's app store. Tune in with music, sports, news, and comedy. From over 70,000 radio stations around the world, including this Beasley Broadcast Group station. Check it out at TuneIn.com. Or your app store. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cat Williams, and you are listening to Three Point Conversion Radio. All right, welcome back to the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. And... This is wild card weekend. I mean, I'm sorry, not wild card weekend, but divisional round playoffs. And first, I want to give a um, special shout out to Miss Sarah Thomas. Thomas, Miss Sarah Thomas will be the first woman referee, woman to referee a playoff game. So I, it's big. You know, I, I'm, I'm the. It's big. It's big. I'm the type that. Just, I'm not even looking at it like that. Like, hey, she's good. So, you know what I'm saying? She's she's there. So, hey, kudos to her. But, um, you know, I think other women who wants to get into this field and see her excelling or anything, and it's not even women, just anybody. If you feel like, whether it's race, gender, religion, you feel like you can't be because of your race, religion, gender, or what have you, She's proving it. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to her. Um, but today is a division round playoffs. And this is where I am kind of um, going through right now because we're, we're, not, <laughs> we're not here. Because but, you lost? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so... And right now, just for that, I hope that the Dallas Cowboys make it to the Super Bowl. No, I want them to go to the Super Bowl and fumble and lose that way. I'm just kidding. But you know who won't be there? (laughs) 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 
got some ping pong action going on, baby. Mm-hmm. Yo, sir. G, how you turn on me, dog? I, I was with you. you. But anyway, we get, <laughs> we have uh, we have some in- interesting games um, this weekend. It's going to be because you you got like I said, people didn't expect the Eagles to play the Saints. You really didn't expect the Cowboys to play the Rams. Everybody's waiting for the Cowboys to play the New Orleans Saints, but they're playing the Rams. Um, but let's start off with the Colts and Chiefs. It's supposed to snow today. Well, it's snowing today. It's snow. In Kansas City. In Kansas City. There won't be no barbecue today. Do they have a chance, the Colts? And why? They have a chance because it's snowing. They have a chance because their offensive line is mean. Mm. Their offensive line. So you have Justin Houston, D. Ford, um, all these guys that can get to the quarterback for Kansas City. This is their strongest piece on defense. Right. Secondary has been garbage all season. Barry, we've seen him go up against the likes of Grunt in the past, but we have not seen him at this level or at that level here recently. So you got Ebron, you got T.Y. Hilton, you got an offensive line that allowed Mac to run for, what, 148 yards last week. You know, on the flip side, we got to see if Andy Reid can prevail in a playoff. One playoff win, you say? One playoff win as yeah, a Chiefs Kansas, coach. As a Chiefs coach. New quarterback, I get it. But you don't have Kareem Hunt. That's that's big. Don't have Kareem Hunt. You do have Tyreek Hill, but it's snowing. This could go – this could – this game – this is what I think people have been waiting for. Let's see how you perform in the playoff when the weather changes and when you have to play against or not just against an opponent, but in adverse conditions. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, I mean, you say the coach because of the offensive line and they got a running back who can run the ball well and this probably fit for him. But those wide receivers for it in the – same type of players, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They're not built for this. So with the Colts, I think what well, the Chiefs, I think the fact that they have the crowd behind them. You know, this is this is football to them right now, you know. And then they, they really believe. Let's be real. Those other years, Chiefs last year against Titans, they were loud, but it was a sense of you could tell they didn't believe that they were going to win. They were nervous. I'll say that. Well, I think they're they're confident now. But I think because it's a whole different team than Andy Reid. I think you look at Andy Reid's team, look at it, and then we'll move to the next game. Alex Smith. Right. Come on. I mean, the wide receiver core back then, no. They had Kareem Hunt. But and other running backs that could have been successful, they were hurt. But yet still, he didn't have the weapons that he have now. He didn't have the intangibles at the quarterback position back then that he has now. I think that makes a difference, and I think the mindset of them now and Andy Reid feels like he's going to win because of that. Real quick before we move on to the next game, all the coach has to do is. Move the chain, keep Mahomes off the field, right? Their defense is underrated. They got one of the best linebackers, rookie linebackers that we've seen in a long time. If you force Kansas City to be one-dimensional, come out, throw the ball, stop the clock, three and out, and the Colts get the ball back and they run 12-play drive, 14-play drive, getting field goals or getting a touchdown, the Chiefs – you forcing them to be one dimensional, that's 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 a recipe for a L. But can I say this though? With the Chiefs, with the Coast defense, they play the cover too. We heard Booger McFarlane, Booger McFarlane say they're 
um, the the cover two has won six Super Bowls. The last one was 2010. The cover two doesn't work anymore. It worked last week because Houston doesn't have any weapons. That's going to be They have t- no speed. And they have no speed. This is a tall task when you're playing speed, talent, and weapons all over the place. Is it speed in the snow? It's still speed. Because mm. th- they're still going to be faster than you because you're going to be slower also. So it, it's running straight down. Snow doesn't stop that. But it's just cutting. But, but can the ball get there? Snow, with, wind. Hey, with his arm, probably so. But we'll see. I like picking my winner, but I'm just saying we'll see. Now the next game, we have the Cowboys and the Rams. Cowboys travel to the Rams. The Rams have been lately. Now, they get Gurley back. They say Gurley's looking fresh and everything like that. And we'll probably talk about that later on in this show. But do the Cowboys have enough offense with their defense to to be able to score more points than the Rams? I don't think so. You don't think so? Mm-mm. They have to keep the Rams' offense off the field. Uh, what the Cowboys do best is what the Rams give up the most, and that's run the ball. You're not going to be able to just run, run, run and score points. You're going to have to at least be able to put some points on the board in the air. And because Seattle couldn't throw the ball, uh, they didn't attempt to throw the ball, they ran the ball to throw, the Rams will throw the ball to run in this game as far as I'm concerned. Mm. I think uh, it's going to be whatever that the Rams, whatever Todd Gurley can give him. It's really going to depend on what he can give him. If he's effective, then that's going to make Jared Goff more effective because Dallas will be worried more about Gurley than Goff. If they're able to contain Gurley and you have to make, and they make Goff have to beat them, that gives Dallas more of a chance to win. And I think offensively with Dallas, if they are able to, they'll have to control the clock, keep the keep the Rams off the field. And I don't think that as great as Aaron Donald is, I don't think that he can. He's not. It's not going to be a game where he beats them by himself, right? And it's going. He's going to need the other defensive players, especially the secondary, to make plays. And that secondary is iffy. And I, and I think Dak. I think we're finally starting to see the deck that we saw the first year he came in the league, the way he's playing, uh, being instinctive, you know, making throws on the run, making the right play, not messing up. <laughs> if he continues to do that, and he's and we know Dak, he when he plays with confidence, I mean, man, he's he won rookie of the year. So um offensive rookie of the year. But I think I think this boats well with with um, Dallas Cowboys if that happens. But like I said, it's a tall task, man, because now you got to play the running game and the passing game. Right. Now, quickly, let's go to this Chargers. Well, let's go to Eagles Saints first. Quickly, do you think Eagles have a chance? I do. Mm. I do think they have a chance. Uh, it's a very small chance, but I do think they do have a chance. For whatever reason, and I don't think if anybody – tell me they figured this out, then they lying because there's no way that you can figure out why Nick Foles plays so well in these type games. We have not figured this out yet. They do the same exact thing. They get the ball out quick. The Saints get the ball out quick. It's the it's the same principle. It slows down the rush. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing is the secondary of the Eagles has gotten better while the Saints finally have a top 10 defense. So you got it's it's a it's a test match at this particular point. I I think it's more so of the defensive line for the for the Eagles. If they can control and get to him, then I think Eagles have a chance. But if they can't get to Breeze, they won't get to him because he's the second least sacked quarterback yeah, in the league. And only it was only yeah. They ain't gonna get to him. They're not gonna get and to him. And they're at home. And then the game And it was forty eight seven. Right. Like that. Right, exactly. <laughs> Chargers and the Patriots. This this is the big game. I think this comes to 
schematics. You know, it's going to be scheme versus scheme. The thing is, you would think they have a they have a um, a easier task because now they don't have to worry about their running game, but it's different because with Tom Brady, they might run the ball they because they can run the ball with Michelle or they can pass the ball, dink and dunk. <laughs> James White. White, Edelman. So this becomes, can they get to Brady? That's that's what it is. I think what's what New England will need is – they need to get something out of Gronk. Like, right. some, he has to be effective in some kind of way because if Brady can get him the ball, it opens things up for everyone else. But if he can't, it's going to be a struggle, and that will give the Chargers a chance. And I think this this buy might have helped that situation. But on the other side, with the Chargers, I think what they have to do is if Gordon is healthy – they have to run the ball. They they can't be one dimensional at all. They can't. It has to be third and four, right. third and five. Eckler to me is the key to this game for the Chargers because when he comes in and spells Gordon, not only does he have to run the ball, but he has to block the ball. He has to block also. I, if if they give Rivers time, because think about it, Rivers can't throw. If he's Rivers is crafty in the pocket, but if Rivers is going to his left then he can't throw. But if he's rolling to his right, he can still get that ball out and be accurate. And he's going against history. Uh, Rivers has never beaten Brady. Ever. 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 That, and if it snows, goes against the Chargers. But I think the key to this game, I know we got to move on, do not, and I repeat, let's do not underestimate Gus Bradley's defense. He's been a wizard with it for years for years. He just doesn't has it. He hasn't gotten the credit mm-hmm. that, in my opinion, he sorely deserves as far as a defensive coordinator. Mm. But we'll come up with our picks later on in the show. But right now, we're going to take a quick break and we will be back with our stop it segment. Keep it locked. Leilani Mitchell from the Phoenix Mercury, and you're listening to the Three Point Conversion. The opinions expressed during the sponsored programs on this station are strictly those of the program hosts, guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of Beasley Broadcast Group, this station, its staff, other advertisers, or agencies. What's going on, folks? It's L.A. and Eric from Brownstown USA Podcast on the Three Point Conversion. You know, L.A., these guys may have the smarts on a national level, but I think we can take them when it comes to the 216. Man, stop it. You're on Garbage Watch. Anyway... Check us out weekly for updates, news, stories, and opinions you can count on about football from the heartland of America, the Cleveland Browns. Only on the three-point conversion. Now let's throw it back to the sports lounge now! No mercy, don't let up on them. Go hard on them, Mr. Controversy. Hit them with the stop it button. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. This is the time we like to thank everyone who is listening live, who supports us, looks out for us, give us word of encouragement. We appreciate you. And um, uh, once again, we thank you. And we Hopefully you keep it going. And now it is time for the most infamous, the most famous stop it segment. Let's get it. Stop 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 it. Yes. 
S-T-O-P, new word, I-T. Stop it! Stop it. Get some help. All right. H.O., what's on you? What is your stop it my, moment? My stop it this week goes uh, goes to no other than Mr. John Elway for blocking a person from getting a job. And after they didn't agree to terms, he gets rid of the guy anyway. Stop it. Wait, he got rid of him? He don't have a job. But he's still in the front he's office, though. No, he's not in the front office. That's gone, too. Oh. Yes. Stop it. Wow. Did y'all hire someone yet? The Falcons? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I know y'all sick. You, 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 you block him from interviewing. Then you make him the offensive coordinator. You don't agree with the staff that he wants to bring in. So you say, well, don't even worry about any offensive coordinator. And your front office job, you can go ahead and get that. Too. Now you can interview. Mm. Well, the jobs are taken. Right. Mm-hmm. Come on, John. Wrong. That's Tripping. Dirty. All right. G. All right. My uh, stop it goes to uh, Cleveland Indians pitcher Trevor Bauer. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> For um, he was harassing a had an issue on Twitter with harassing some 21-year-old <laughs> woman. And when reporters asked him about it the next uh, the next week, in the clubhouse, before the reporter even finished asking the question, he just walks out. And uh, they said, you know, you had the social media thing that uh, last week. And as soon as they said that, he's like, thank you for your time. And he walked away and he walked out. But then later on Twitter, because I think that's his his safe his safe place. Yeah, him and Kevin Durant friends. <laughs> <laughs> if you see what he tweets about, nah, they're okay. not friends at all. But he says, also note to reporters: if you're going to write baseless hit pieces about me and not even interview me for the story, at least stick to your guns and don't bother saying hi to me in person. If you hate me, just hate me and stick to it. Don't be soft. Uh, well, if you. They tried to interview you and you walked out. <laughs> right. Like, what? So, w- w- which one is it? <laughs> I see why Cleveland wanted to trade him. So, he gets a stop. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> I see why Cleveland wanted right. to trade him. And last but not least, my st- stop it moment. Oh, man. It goes to um, Miami University's head coach, football head coach, Manny Diaz. <laughs> he came out. And talked about as far as why players are going to other programs. And I guess not his program. And he says that, look, the world has changed, and I'm going to blame the NBA. Once Kevin Durant went to the Warriors after the, they were up three one, when he was at Oklahoma City, and then he, you know, and then now I should say now kids want to go where the winning is. So that's hard because you have to create the winning to get to them to come to where the winning is. What? Stop it. So you're blaming, you're a football coach. You're blaming Kevin Durant because you can't get number one to come to Miami? Because players want to go to where they can win? Man. All right, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> wow. Man, yeah. Man, he already messing up when he get there. We'll be right back to talk some NBA football. I'm NBA football. I'm tripping. I can even stop it. NBA basketball. <laughs> stop it. New sport. I'm thinking about Chicago. <laughs> I'm still thinking about the Bears. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Let me break down to y'all what's so dope about the three-point conversion. First of all, everybody is a fan of the game first. Second of all, everybody is a student of the game second. And third of all, 
we're the average sports fan just like everybody else we're not coming in here walking with our nose tipped high acting snooty acting brand new this is a grassroots organization bar none the three-point conversion where fans opinions matter be sure to visit the website wwwthe number 3 pointconversioncom Get your fix, get your articles, multimedia, and everything else that you as a sports fan need. So again, the three point conversion.com. It's where it's at, man, where fans' opinions matter. Hey, what's going on, sports fans? It's the 2018 Battlegrounds champion, Damian Adams. From the real deal with Damian Adams. Now you can catch my show weekly on the Three Point Conversion Station on Spreaker Radio. But for right now, I'm doing what everybody else should be doing, and that's listening to Mr. Controversy and the Intellectual in the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. It's quick hits, what's on my mind, the infamous stop it segment. You gots to be there every Saturday morning on the Three Point Conversion Station for the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge hosted by Mr. Controversy. Get him! Back inside the three point conversion sports lounge. I believe I said NBA football. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm, I'm still jacked up from Sunday, man. I ain't going to lie. Anyway, it is time for NBA football. I'm just kidding. <laughs> time for this NBA basketball. And, of course, we couldn't do this without a friend of the show, uh, someone who we definitely respect, and he's one of the, he's the owner of Basketball Writers, which is a, a website for basketball. If you're a basketball fan, especially NBA fan, is that's what it is. You're gonna get the great greatest writers, great content, and you can go to bballwriters.com. And um, you can follow them at B-Ball Writers, and they cover the NBA, WNBA, EuroLeague, eSports, and gambling um, with the G League likely coming. It's no other than our man, and you can follow him at B-Ball Joe, my man Joe Cordes. What's going on, Joe? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Let's talk some hoops. There you go. What's up? Yes, sir. Let's start. You know, we got to start with a – Atlanta Hawks always like, you know, bring them in. That's who the three point conversion covered. Then we're in Atlanta. Kent Bazemore has had his ups and downs lately. He's been he's hurt now, but before he got injured, he was playing pretty well. It was whispers going around that, you know, some teams were looking at him. Do you see the Hawks trading him to a, any contender? And if so, which contender do you see trying to get him? And if not. Um, or if you don't believe so, why do you think he? Why do you think Atlanta should keep him? Well, the difficult part with Kent Bazemore is the contract because he is a useful wing player. He's a little bit short to be playing small forward at six five, but he can play the shooting guard spot. You know, he's hitting a career forty four, uh, almost career high forty four percent from the field. Three point shooting leaves a little bit to be desired this year, thirty three percent, but. You know, he's doing things in other categories. It's always tough on a you know a bad team to wonder where those stats are coming from. But he's proven that he can be useful on pretty decent teams before this, too. But he's making $18 million a year, and that's the reason. And that's not only for this season, but next. So that's the reason I don't see Kent Bazemore being traded for to a contender, because most of those teams don't have a lot of deadweight contracts on the books that are going to match up in order to make that deal happen, unless they get a third party involved. I think what you would see is more maybe a fringe playoff team that's trying to swing for the fences and get over the hump. 
they might be looking at him, especially if the Hawks are willing to take on a dead contract in return. You know, and then that fringe playoff team's got to sweeten it with a pick or they've got to send somebody back. So you're going to be looking at somebody like the Memphis Grizzlies. They're looking to unload Chandler Parsons. Would they be willing to do that? Uh, he's got two years left on his deal, but that's $24 million for Parsons. Um, are they going to sweeten that with a pick in order to get somebody usable? Because it looks like they've moved on from Chandler, even though he's supposedly healthy. Detroit, they could build something around John Luer and Langston Galloway, but it seems like they like their wing combination. The big team that I'm looking for, Hawks fans know them very well, and that's the Charlotte Hornets. They are supposedly trying to move on from Nick Batum's contract. That is a whopper at $24 million as well, and there's an extra year on top of that. They would have to sweeten the pot somehow, either with one of their younger players or with a pick. Um, we haven't seen them necessarily do that sort of thing in the past, and you got to ask yourself, is that too much of a price to pay to get Kent Bazemore, who, again, a very useful player, but is he really a game-changer when you can get that kind of production at about half that price? All right, Joe, as far as uh, we I love talking to you, uh, by the way, uh, but when you look at the West, uh, the Western Division is up and down. One week you're in last place, the next week you're in third place. It's kind of flip-flop. I think we can all agree that Golden State is probably the team to beat, especially with Boogie coming back. Do want to ask what team, if there's any in your opinion, has the best chance to unseat Golden State in the West? Yeah, I spent about an hour trying to do research and answer this question earlier this morning as I was prepping for this, and it's really difficult. There's a, a handful of teams that I think we can throw out. Uh, Utah, the Lakers, Clippers, Spurs, Blazers, those are all good teams that have a reasonable case you know, to be a playoff team and maybe even win around during the playoffs. But it left three others that really stood out, just not enough to say that they, they can – you know, unseat Golden State with any seriousness here. That's going to be the Denver Nuggets, Oklahoma City Thunder, and Houston Rockets. The Rockets stand out in the scoring department. We know that they can keep pace with Golden State, but like the Warriors, the Rockets are not as good defensively as they were last year. They started out really slow, just like the Warriors did, and they're hitting their stride right now. They're also looking for Chris Paul to come back. We saw their seven-game series last year. It was really close. Golden State was a better team last year. The Rockets were a better team last year. I look at the Denver Nuggets. They're right there in a lot of really key categories. You look at assists, which is something that the Warriors have always had that as a hallmark. Denver's right there, and in fact, even ahead of Golden State. And then especially clutch performance. Golden State has not been good in clutch games this year. I think they're 10-8 and eight in those situations, and Denver has been very, very good. The Nuggets have a high upside left to go because Jokic is so young. They're waiting on Gary Harris. Uh, and Jamal Melfi at the same time. They've had injuries to Paul Millsap this year. So they've done all this to be 28-12 and 12 and first in the conference by a hair. They've done all that while not at full strength. So there's upside left there. And I look at the Oklahoma City Thunder. They are the best defensive team out of the four that we've talked about so far. They are long now at every single position. Bringing in Nerlens Noel to pair with Jeremy Grant up front. Obviously, Steven Adams is a beast down low. Uh, but even Terrence Ferguson has given them good minutes. Uh, Chick Diallo has given them good minutes on the wing. They are just long and explosive at every single position. And then you've got Russell Westbrook and Paul George in there, two guys who, I mean, those are Swiss Army players that really can fill in any role. So, those are the three teams that are going to have a shot at Golden State. It's going to be one of those three in the Western Conference Finals. I just can't pick one yet. We haven't seen enough. Awesome. All right. Once again, we're here live with Joel Cortez, my man, um, owner of the Basketball Writers. You can um, catch that website. It's for, it's for basketball lovers, NBA, college. You love hoop. It's perfect for you. And you can um, go to B-Ball Writers and make sure you subscribe, and you'll get um, great content. Also, follow him on at Joe B-Ball. I'm sorry, at B-Ball Joe. Follow him on Twitter at B-Ball Joe. Now, Joe, you mentioned the Denver Nuggets. And I want to know, like, how good are the Nuggets? But not only that, like, are they able to keep this up throughout the season and postseason without – a go-to guy. I know Jokic is that guy, but as far as clutch, a superstar, we all know playoffs are for the superstars. How far can they go with this team? 
Well, I think Jokic this year has unequivocally cemented himself as a superstar in this league. Uh, it is not premature to say that. He absolutely controls the game from start to finish. He has made clutch plays. This is a guy who's averaging almost eight assists as a center, and he's averaging 20 and 10 you know, in points and boards as well. Plus, he is a plus defender. So this is a five-tool player now. Um, I mean, he they are running the entire offense through him. But your question is still valid about the Nuggets because that is the only superstar on the roster. And teams are obviously going to key in on him during the playoffs. He's still going to make them pay. But the game plan is going to be all based on making somebody else beat them. It's similar to what you know Milwaukee is going to face with Giannis Antetokounmpo. It's going to be the same thing that Houston has to face if Chris Paul doesn't come back at 100%. So it can be done, but really the question here is what kind of upside does Jamal Murray and Gary Harris have left during this season? Are these you know good scorers who are streaky? Gary Harris is a good defender as well. Jamal Murray's got wonderful three point range, you know, and can get to the basket. Are those guys going to be consistent on a night to night basis when they get to the playoffs? Something that they have not yet done. And are they going to have enough depth behind them? Which I believe the answer is yes. If this team is healthy, Denver is freakishly deep. But beyond, you know, Paul Millsap, but Trey Lyles gives them good minutes off the bench. Mason Plumley is a fantastic basket cutter. Torrey Craig has been helpful. Monte Morris has been helpful. They've got the pieces to go the distance, but you just wonder if it's a year too early. Like I said before, they're 28 and 12, and every year, We'll always see somebody in the first half of the season jump out to a really good record and maybe be sitting at the top of the conference, and then all of a sudden they get into those dog days, they get into that stretch playoff run, and they fade a little bit. I don't know that that's going to be Denver this year just because, again, they're getting healthy and they've done all this while not at full strength. But I don't know if they're going to be ready to walk in in their first year together in the playoffs, essentially, as this group, that they're going to be able to walk in and march you know, three rounds into the Western Conference. That feels a little premature. All right, Joe, uh, I think people would think we live in Denver the way we talk about the Nuggets. But <laughs> I, I, I do have to ask you, uh, we had a poll up this earlier this week and asking the top three MVPs for the season, everybody with the LeBron, Harden, and the Greek Freak. It, when it got to me, I kind of threw Jokic in, 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 in the fold because I'm like, Listen, he he's doing this without a healthy team, so I just kind of wanted to get your opinion. Would you consider Jokic as a sleeper MVP pick for this year based on what he has done with not a full healthy team? I think he's in the conversation and that's as much of a, you know, compliment and a hat tip that we can pay to him. <laughs> okay. uh, I don't think it goes I don't think it goes any further than that. I look at Jokic the way that I did the Greek freak a couple years ago. We can see where this is going to go. Uh, he definitely deserves that respect and to be there. The fact that his team is sitting in first place right now is a big thing, but I'm not going to put Jokic over what James Harden is doing, which is on a historic level again. I'm not going to put him over what Antetokounmpo is doing now in Milwaukee, where he has reached um, not necessarily the threshold of his talents, but he is absolutely there on a nightly basis and is completely unstoppable. Jokic feels like he's a year, maybe a year or two away, but the very fact that he's in this conversation, and we can all say this with a straight face, uh, you know, that again, that's a huge compliment to him. But, no, I, I would not name Jokic MVP yet. Okay. All right. We definitely appreciate you, Mr. Cortez. Thank you for coming on, sir. You know you're always welcome. And um, continue, man, to give that knowledge. There's some great stuff right there. Thanks a lot, guys, for, for having me, and it's always great talking hoops with you. Absolutely. Thanks, Joe. No problem. Thanks. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be back with our segment, Ask a Doc. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm Diana Taurasi from the Phoenix Mercury, and you're listening to the Three Point Conversion Radio. When is the best time to talk to your family about staying in touch during a disaster? When floodwaters reach your door? 
When wildfires are engulfing the edge of your neighborhood, or an earthquake is destroying buildings, or is the best time perhaps today? During a disaster, you may not be able to stay in touch with your family or friends as easily as you think. Go to ready.gov/communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. What's up? This is Anthony Hamilton, and you're listening to the Three Point Conversion. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. We have Dr. Fowler, Donald, Doc, Dr. Donald Fowler. That is the third, right? Yes, sir. And um, he is an orthopedic for Ortho Atlanta. And he is here for our segment, Ask a Doc. This is the segment where we like to ask about injuries and give let him give his, <laughs> not only his analysis, but his opinion as well, because he's a sports fan, avid sports fan. And I want to start first, you know, divisional playoffs. And Ty Gurley and the L.A. Rams are hosting the Dallas Cowboys. This will be his first game in three weeks, and it was his knee, but they say he feels better, he looks great in practice, but he's going to have to deal with some this playoff, so you know they're going to tackle him, of course, but it's going to be some extra hitting. Will he feel some type of um, rust or even pain because he hadn't played that long, or how, like how long do you expect him to adjust? Yeah, I think that's a good question. I, I think it probably won't take him long, but maybe a series or two just to kind of get loosened up and get back into the game flow. It's not like he had a long layoff, but still a few weeks still still takes some time to adjust back to NFL game speed no matter what you're doing in practice. And I agree he looks good in the video, and he's tried to said to his critics, look at the video, I look good. But uh, certainly it, it will take, take a few series, I think, to shake it off. But I expect him to play and, and play well and – I, I think they could have played him towards the end of the season those last two weeks if they would really had to, but it was smart to rest him, especially since that was his ACL reconstructed knee when he was at, at Georgia, just to make sure you don't have any bigger setback. Hey, Doc, this is um, this is um, NFL playoffs. And this question uh, basically is shout out to Stephen A. Smith. Um, Hunter Henry mm-hmm. has been uh, – on the active roster. Uh, and I'm I'm like, well, he hadn't played the whole season. D- I mean, is it worth him trying to play in this game when it's, it's uh, possible snow? Possible yeah. snow. Uh, he hadn't played the whole season. Possible snow. It's a, it's a knee injury. Your thoughts on if he actually plays or how effective can he be in snow coming off a knee injury? Yeah, so I, I'm very interested on this one. I mean, he, <laughs> he had his uh, ACL tear back in May, so we're talking somewhere around eight months or so from the from the injury, which is kind of the earlier side of when we're seeing NFL players get back. I mean, Adrian Peterson, RG3, those guys, they were kind of that seven, eight-month time frames and, and actually looked pretty good initially when they, when they came back, certainly. So I, I think it's reasonable that we might see him out there Again, you're talking about Gurley taking three weeks off. He hasn't played the whole season, so right. so so he's going to be rusty if he is out there. I'm not expecting you know a, a crazy game. They still, of course, got Gates, who obviously isn't that fast, but has reliable hands, and he's going to be in some packages. So uh, I think they might even have him out there almost to kind of play with the with the Patriots, kind of scare him a little bit, and have a have another possible weapon or option that they just kind of have to. Somewhat well, we don't know what this guy is going to do, and uh, and maybe kind of misdirect him a little bit. Mm. All right, and once again, we're here live with Doctor Donald Fowler the third, who is an orthopedic for Ortho Atlanta, does a great and a fantastic job. And we're asking him questions about certain injuries, not just football, but in all sports. Demarcus Cousins. He was deemed and scheduled to come back on the 18th or is scheduled to come back on the 18th. And this is after tearing his Achilles. This is actually will be, it will be, I think, a week short of one, one year, year, one yeah. full year. 
they're saying he's going to start. Now, Kurt said he's going to play him in spurts, whatever, but he's going to start. How much of an impact can he be? And how long do you expect him to get back to his old self? Yeah, Achilles, honestly, in NBA is, is probably the worst injury you can have mm. with kind of think about jumping, explosion coming from your calf. That's what connects your Achilles tendon, what helps you get vertical. There's not a great track record of guys coming back from Achilles stairs, especially in NBA. I mean, the, the, the bigger names, obviously Kobe had it later in his career. Um, he was already slowing down. Uh, you know, you think of people like Rudy Gay, Eldon Brand. A lot of these guys were, were older because it tends to be more in your 30s. So I think what is going for Cousins, he's 28. So he's he's still on the younger side. He, I mean, certainly can throw down, but he's not like an above-the-rim player. He has a big body, bangs down low. He doesn't, you know, have to rely necessarily quite as much on his, his vertical leap. And he has superstars around him. So it it's not going to be a lot of pressure for him to carry the offense. So... I think, you know, as far as a situation goes, coming off an Achilles injury one year out, this is the best thing he could possibly hope for. They're not going to have to rush him. I don't see him playing probably more than 20 minutes kind of initially when they when they bring him back. And, and it will take time probably till the end of the season until I think he's really in the game flow. But But I think he will be successful. Do I think he will be the player he was prior to the injury? Probably not, but I still think he will be a productive player. All right, Doc, let's uh, move a little bit to the NBA. Derrick Rose, um, he's had some very good moments this year uh, uh, for the, the Timberwolves. But what has not changed is him missing games. Uh, we all know that he has had some, some, some injuries that has kept him out for maybe a season, season and a half, and things of that nature. With him having these moments and you got people rattling uh, around him to to be that same guy, are we just expecting to just think and, and, and just say, look, he's just going to miss some games moving forward for the rest of his career and it's going to always be a knee issue? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think Derrick Rose is almost one of those, I mean, fan favorites. He, he seems like a good guy. He was – pretty much left for dead almost a year ago and he's really kind of flourished coming back this year he's gone through I think four knee surgeries two on each side including ACL mm. and, and and now we're we're talking about an ankle injury that kept him out for I think it was six games but right. he came back last night and 21 points I think five assists and 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 played 30 minutes and looked pretty healthy so kind of like you said I think, unfortunately, his, his body is a little more fragile. Say it, say it how you want. So you're going to have to manage his minutes and right. play in time, and, and he's going to miss some games. But but I think you still see he has that talent when when you kind of put him in the right situation. They got other guard play uh, in Minnesota. So, again, it's not like he has to play 40 minutes a game. So I think it's really about being smart with his minutes and his rehab and conditioning and everything else to try to maximize what you get out of him. Yeah, that's that's uh, interesting, right? Man. That's there you have it. Real quick, can I get your four picks? Yeah, for uh, the game today. My my only going against chalk. I'm I'm gonna take the Chargers over the over the Patriots. I know I don't think Rivers ever beat Brady, but I just I test. I don't think the Patriots are who they used to be. So uh, I think all the other teams, Chiefs. Um, Saints and, and Rams, are, they will all be good games, but I think home teams win except for I'm, I'm going Chargers. Hmm. Pull, pull me upset. All right. all right. There you have it, my man, Dr. Donald Fowler III. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be back f- with our picks on the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. What's up, man? It's Metal World Peace. Shout out to the Three Point Conversion Radio. Have you been looking for a radio station that gives you sports? I don't believe it! It's a touchdown! Entertainment? Are you not entertained? And other special interest talk shows? Well, isn't that special? All on one app? Yo, that's dope. What app is that? It's the real 1100 AM app for WWE. Grab it for free in your Google Play or Apple App Store today. Hey! 
Hey, what's going on? It's your man Terrell Thomas. We out here right now. Big up, shout out to the three point conversion. All right, we are back inside the three point conversion sports lounge. It is time for our weekend picks. And HO, we're going to start with you. Mm. First game, Colts and the um, Chiefs. Chiefs. Who do you have? I'm taking the Colts. I'm just jumping straight out and just. I'm a believer of, of of offensive line. I'm a believer of, of Andrew Luck. Um, I, I just think that they are possibly the most underrated team that we've seen this year that does not get enough talk about how they actually built their team and not to even mention that they got $118 million in cap, cap space for next year. Mm. You mm. know, so I'm going with the, I'm going with the Colts. G, who do you have, sir? I'm gonna take the uh I'm gonna take the Chiefs. Um I don't think that the I think the Chiefs are used to playing outside. <laughs> and even though like it's gonna be snow and the Chiefs might not have the speed that they normally have, I think just having the advantage of the uh having the home field advantage and the crowd behind them and I think they'll make enough plays defensively to to beat the Colts. And uh, the Colts have a good strategy defensively. I don't think it's going to work against the Chiefs, though. That's the bottom line. It's not good. Chiefs have too much talent. And, again, it's snow outside, but you still can run fast if you're running a straight line. And if Tariq Hill is running a straight line, that's, you know, and I think with the cover two, uh, Kelsey's going to eat up that middle, you know, um, if Leonard, if Leonard is that good where he's able to cover him and get range. Okay. But Kelsey's going to eat up that. And then, like I said, with Mahomes throwing the ball is just, he's accurate. So I have the chiefs winning as well, but love, would love to see the Colts win Cowboys and Rams. G I'm gonna start with you first. I, f- <laughs> never mind. I, forgot. I can't pick against, Dallas, but Who do you I know there are ways that the Rams can win, mm-hmm. but it, it just comes down to execution, really. Like I said, their secondary is iffy. I don't think that Aaron Donald can beat the Cowboys offense by himself, but he is going to still be disruptive. So it's going to be on Dak and, and Zeke to make some plays for the offensive line to make some, to help make some plays. Uh, defensively, um, well, offensively for the Rams, it's whatever Gurley can give them. Like, he has to be effective. If he's not effective, that's going to affect golf. So it's it's really on Gurley to help the um, Rams. But I can't I can't pick against the Cowboys. They're my team, so I can't do it. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I, I think the Rams will throw to Ron. Um, I think Seattle – fed right into the hands last week. Their front seven is awesome. They will stop the ball. I think the Rams will have a strategy of stretching them out first and then coming back with Gurley to run the ball to kind of give them a little space. So I'm taking the Rams. I'm taking the home team for this one. Honestly, this is tough for me because I I want to say the Rams, but I did say earlier this season, not because I said it, but I I mean, I'm starting to believe it again. Like it's happening where – you look at the way the um, Dallas has been playing, the Dallas Cowboys has been playing, and the way Dak has been playing, which has been impressive. This last three, four-week run that Dak has been on has been reminiscent of the Dak we saw his rookie year. So that coupled with the running game, and then not to mention you still have – you have a wide receiver. Even though they're thin at wide receiver, that's the scary part. They're thin at wide receiver. But if the defense can control the game just enough, 
to where they, you know, they can run the ball and then be able to get Cooper the ball at certain times of the game. Dallas might steal it, but through all that, like I just think they're too thin at the wide receiver position, and I think Rams pull it off. So I'm going Rams. But this is a tough game for me to decide. Now, what about the Saints and the Eagles? Who you have, sir? Uh, I'm going with the Saints. Um, they've been rested. Um, I think the – you know, I won't be surprised if the Eagles play a, play a tough – in uh, a, uh, a a close game, I just think that um, you know walking into the locker room showing me two hundred twenty five thousand cash with a Lombardi trophy is very <laughs> very motivational. Ah, you not lying. Very motivational, you know. So uh, and the Saints are at home, and this is a hard place to win. It is. It was forty eight to seven last time. But was Nick playing though? Nope. That's and, and you know it's a different dynamic though. I, I feel you. Well, I and I think the thing is, um, can the Eagles run the ball? I still no, feel like they can't. They can't. Uh. Uh-uh. And if it's going to be where you know the Saints are just pinning their ears back and going after Foles, it doesn't matter how quick he gets rid of the ball. I don't think he's going to be that effective. <laughs> Well, you you know, <laughs> it. I think with with the wide receivers, man, like especially Alshon, this is the type of game where he comes up big because you don't need speed. Just as long as he's moving the <laughs> chain, and he's hard to guard. He catches those crazy. If Eli Apple's on him, maybe. Right, <laughs> that's true. And if Eli is on him, they're gonna switch him around. That's a Dallas fan for you. I know, but he's right though. <laughs> it, when he like got traded to the uh, Saints. to the Saints, he's he still not torched. been that good. <laughs> he had a few games where he was good though. Come on, G. he's he's on a good defense. He was he was good a few times. But he he's the as I the word I used last week. He's the mark. <laughs> <laughs> See, we, we're, West we're, side. We're, we're we're not condoning game member talk right now. <laughs> The straight up Mark. <laughs> Taking it back to 19. See, they wouldn't 19. know that if you didn't mention it, man. <laughs> straight up Mark. <laughs> so, so G thinks uh, Eli's a straight up Mark. So, no. <laughs> but no, but honestly, um, it falls back on Eagles D-line. I've always said it's about the Saints. And that's why Dallas was so successful, you know, and no one else probably hadn't been. If you can get to – to um, breeze with four, then you have a chance. But if not, he has all day to pick. Then pick and pop. I think Eagles in trouble. So we might see another forty-eight to seven game again. So um, especially in New Orleans. That was in. Was that in New Orleans last time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the last game, L.A. Chargers going up against the New England Patriots. G, who do you like? It all looks it all points toward the Chargers winning this game. I think they have the better defense. I think their offense um, can beat the Patriots defense. And with the Patriots offense, it's like you don't they, I think they kind of thrive on being like kind of unpredictable, but I think it all centers around can Gronk give them anything. And if he does, then that's going to make the Chargers pay attention to him. The pass rush won't be there as fast, and that might open things up for Michelle, for for Edelman, for White. So I think it all depends on if Gronk can be any kind of effective because the Patriots don't have that deep threat. They don't have Josh Gordon anymore. They don't have um, – Cord- Cordero Patterson is playing running back and punt returner, and maybe he'll have to make a play for them to have a chance. But uh, I'm going to – even though Rivers has never beaten Brady – I'm going to go with the Chargers. It just looks like a better matchup for him. I'm with G. Uh, Law Average says, you know, it's it's that time. And, you know, we've all been waiting for this guy, Rivers, to have that that signature win. And I'm just a Gus Bradley believer. I, I just think that this defense is so underrated that, you know, it, it is – I just think that they're going to propel 
uh, the Patriots offense and Tom Brady, he still, he's, he's, he's 41. I mean, let's be real. It's 41. I mean, it, doc, there's no way that your bones can get younger, <laughs> no. you know? So I, it is what it is. He's four to one. So avocado ice cream doesn't do because <laughs> <laughs> he said that. What he say? He was yeah, his so. body was built on built for taking hits in the NFL. Or no, his brain has been trained to take hits in the NFL. Yeah. I think that's the age talking, right? So exactly. you got charges. Yeah, I, yeah, charges. But I still think the Patriots win just because. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, I mean, it, I wouldn't be surprised. It's just it doesn't it doesn't the, look that but, great for But them. the scary part is the way they've been playing, they've still been winning. True, they, they're playing a horrible division. But it just seems like when it's playoff time, they dial in. And what other coach gets his team motivated than Belichick? Now, it's crazy because you think of the two playoff games, the first playoff game, I think the first playoff game they lost, LaDainian Thomason was hurt when they played against New England. And um, Rivers was playing with a t- torn ACL, which mm-hmm. is crazy. The next time they went, they had home for the advantage. They had the lead. Right. But the infamous fumble, and it was like, it just couldn't. So it was always there and could have won. But I just think with veterans – Knowing how to play, Gronk is healthy. I, I it's like hard to. The AFC Championship should be called the New England Patriots. I mean, because they're always there. When's the last time they haven't been in the AFC Championship? When's the last time they hadn't been in two years in a row? I mean, they missed two years in a row. It's. I don't even know if they had missed two years in a row. It's they're always there. I think like two thousand eight. That's crazy. Well, so that's all. I, that's why I'm picking Nick. Nick Saban just, has has had a had a run of having his team prepared, and it it it, it looked unprepared Monday. It, yeah, but the quarterback on the other end don't have long hair. Yeah, but I, he, he he gonna be wearing a gold jacket one day. True, that's true. With a bolo tie. <laughs> hey, it's been a lot of quarterbacks that wore gold jackets that hadn't beat Tom Brady, so I was going to be wearing. Go Jackets. But we'll see. Tom Brady won 4-1 then, but he fought one today. All right. It is, it is on you, G. You know how you just have that good feeling for a pick? Do I feel lucky? Yeah, that's this segment. It's time for Over Under with the Intellectual and Mr. Controversy. Only on the three-point conversion. All right. So, um... For over under segment this week, the divisional round version, a um, couple of prop bets that people can look into. So uh, the first one here, uh, who do you think will have the most passing yards? This might be an easy, easier answer than people think. But who had the most passing yards this weekend? Drew Brees, Andrew Luck, or Patrick Mahomes? Ooh, Drew Brees, Andrew Luck. I'm going Drew Brees. Uh, I say, um, I say, um, Andrew Luck, because I think Andrew Luck is going to be down, so he's going to throw, he's going to be one of those 450 yard passing games mm. with two touchdowns, but they probably lose because they're behind. So I, I got Andrew Luck. Yeah, I would lean more towards Breeze because they're playing inside, but. The game is probably going to be over in the third quarter. That's why. 48 to 7. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, another, well, maybe another simple or easy one. Who will have the most rushing yards this weekend? Ezekiel Elliott, Todd Gurley, or Marlon Mack? Mm. Wow. Whew. Ooh, that's a tough one. And uh, which of the defenses has given up 152 yards a game over its last three games? That would be Kansas City. But still, because you know why? Because you know Dallas is going to lean on Ezekiel Elliott. But if Rams get going, Gurley's going to have a – Gurley could break I'm one. going with Zeke. 
I'm going with Zeke. I'm going to go with, uh, because, well, I, I just said, what's the name going to throw for 450 yards? So I, I'm going with, uh, with Ty Gurley. All right. And the last one here, um, who will have the, no, what will be the highest margin of victory in the divisional round? It has been set at 17 and a half. So do you think anyone will lose or win or win by 17 points, 17 or 18? Not points? excluding the Saints. I mean, excluding the Saints. Because <laughs> uh, like, I have the Saints. Yeah, I, I, I will go with the Saints yeah, as well. That's the easy one. <laughs> yeah. It's... I think every other game, I think coach will make it interesting. But, like, it'll be like 16 points they'll lose by. All right. Well, that'll do it for the over-under divisional round version. And uh, back All here. right. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be back with What's On Our Mind. There's a lot going on in the world, and your world is always changing. That's why it's important to stay connected. The latest news, the latest entertainment, the newest music. If it's in the air or on the air, it can be in the palm of your hand, wherever you are, with the iHeartRadio app. iHeartRadio. Over 1,500 live radio stations from across the country and over 15 million songs to create your own custom stations. Mm. Text IHR to 45495 to download the app or listen at iHeartRadio.com. Standard text and data rates apply. What's good, family? I'm Marlon Sucker Free Jones of Sucker Free Life Double LC, and I'm locked in every Saturday to the best sports show on the planet, the three point conversion, with no team or no players off limits. So let's talk sports, the best of the best, the worst of the worst, and everything in between. Can you dig that? It's time to get in the mind of Mr. Controversy and D Intellectual with What's on My Mind. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. And... This next segment, What's On Our Mind, is brought to you by Sucker Free Life, LLC. Make sure you live your truth for the world to see because everyone can be sucker free. Make sure you purchase your apparel today on Facebook.com forward slash Sucker Free Life, LLC. All right. This segment is where we like to express what's on our mind. And I'm going to start first. And so... Make this quick. So, as you know, I've been griping about it all day, all morning that the Chicago Bears lost last week, right? And it's not necessarily towards me because, honestly, I didn't get too much of a third degree or people trying to get on me. Shout out to Rick. But um, what... I don't get and I don't understand and I hate the fact that okay my team lost so any you know your team loses that's fine but when someone tries to troll you and they have nothing to do with your team their team's not in the playoffs shut up (laughs) why are you bothering me I understand, so like for me, I'm a Bears fan. So I understand if I get trolled by the by an Eagles fan because they beat us. Or they um we we lost the game. Uh, but I lose t- I get trolled by an Eagles fan, a Green Bay Packers fan, or anybody in my division. I understand. But if you're an Arizona Cardinals fan, why are you talking to me? Like, 
what is your point? What is it doesn't make sense. I don't get it. For the Alabama Crimson Tide, they lost. You had Fresno State fans getting at Alabama fans. I'm gonna take my boy said this. If your team played in the Christian Mingle Bowl, why are you talking to me? So my point is, you don't have the right to troll if your team sucks or is somehow you're not connected with the Bears or whatever team your team is if you lose. Now, I understand the Patriots. I get they earned that right because you hate the Patriots. I understand the Cowboys because they've earned that right because all they talk about is rings and from 94. I get it. But if you're a San Francisco 49ers fan or whoever, and you're bothering a LA Chargers fan, shut up. What can you say about your team? And I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, well, y'all lost, man. Hey, well, I'm talking about, oh, as soon as you lose, ah, right, what's up with that Bears, the field goal? Shut up. Memes, all the memes. Yeah, too. like, man, that drives me crazy. That's what's on my mind, y'all. I, that's what's on my mind. Mm. My man. I get it all the time with the Duke stuff, too. So, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, Duke go 30 and 1. I get one phone call. Well, what happened to them other 30? So, I get it. Um, but what's on my mind, obviously, is. I love Joel, man. Joel is a good guy, NBA stuff. And, you know, we talked about the house, and I'm pretty sure you can you can rap with me on this, you and G. But it's so much been going on with this Luka Doncic versus Trey Young. And I just kind of want to give people a pause for a second to just think. How much do you think your expectations of what were you expecting from these guys to enter into your opinions about how good Luca is and maybe how not so good Trey is. I wonder if Luca had the Steph Curry moniker coming into this league and Trey didn't no one ever seen him play. I wonder how we would look at that then. Because no one ever seen Luca play. We had no tape. We had no 31 games to just say he led this league in this, he led this league in that. We, we didn't have that. So when you finally see him play, what were you actually expecting? You, weren't, you didn't have any expectations. But with Trey, he led the, the NCAA in scoring. He led the NCAA in assists. He is the, the, the Steph Curry moniker. So when he doesn't live up to the Steph Curry moniker, now he's no good. Now he's a bad pick for the Hawks. If you're a real NBA fan, how about Trey has made John Collins a future all-star? How about he has helped Kevin Herter, who no one has ever heard of, into a solid NBA piece? How about we look at it that way? It's just something to think about. Let's just kind of take your expectations out of players when it comes to your opinions. And that's what's on my mind. <laughs> All right. I definitely understand you, sir. Good stuff. And Brian O'Brien, who cares about that ball? That ball went tip. He missed that field goal. Anyway, <laughs> if you hear this music, you know what it means. It is time to let you go. But before we let you go, we have some shout outs and you might be a part of it. So stay tuned. First of all, I want to thank the almighty God for giving me this opportunity, this platform to say what I say. Talk my talk. Make you all happy, upset, mad. Want to get me to stop it button. I appreciate you, God. Also, I appreciate Jerry Jones for leaving thank that you, drop. Raphael. There you go. You're, you're welcome, Jerry Jones. I appreciate that, Jerry Jones. Anyway, I want to thank um, our sponsors. 
uh, Sucker Free Life LLC, also Cindy Cuts Barbershop. And I want to thank my special guest, Mr. Joel Cortez, and of course, Dr. Donnie Fowler. Also, my team, G, lovely Miss Crystal Dayan, and my main man, H.O. You already know. Thanks again, the big man above. Thanks for the, the chat room uh, guys at the Three Point Conversion Lounge. Thanks the whole crew, Ralph, G, the intellectual crystal, my Duke guy over here. Hey, one big happy family. This is how we do it on Saturday morning. We hope to inspire you each and every Saturday with what we bring to the table as far as the sports world. And if you want to continue to listen to great sports, please tune in. Sports Roundtable each and every Wednesday, 7 to 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. And um, on Wednesdays, I will be hosting a podcast after 9 o'clock because I'm not part of a show from 7 to 9 on Wednesday on 1100 WWE. Whose fault is that? (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) I want to thank my family and friends, beautiful wife, children, cousins, nephew, nieces, aunties, uncles, brothers and sisters, grandparents, and um, play cousins. Uh, Make sure you all love family. Let everyone know you love them while they're still alive. Eat good. Watch some sports. Watch some playoff football. I don't know if I will be. But other than that, till then, same time, same show, same crazy week, same crazy um, sports host, same sports nonsense. Same NBA football. Same NBA football. (laughs) Will you miss me? (laughs) Peace. Huh? You just got done listening to the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Be sure to follow us on our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook accounts at The Three Point Conversion. And also make sure you check out our website, the threepointconversion.com. Be sure to follow us live and listen every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern.